Hi everyone, today I'll be discussing about mercury poisoning. In my previous video, I discussed about arsenic poisoning and today I take the metallic irritant mercury. So I'll be discussing first introduction as to what mercury is, then the toxic compounds that it forms, action, how it works, acute poisoning and chronic poisoning, treatment and the medico legal aspects. So let's start with the introduction. Mercury is a chemical element, it is a metal and the symbol is Hg and atomic number is 80. Its common name is quicksilver or para and it was earlier known as hydrargyrum and hence if someone has chronic poisoning of mercury then that condition is known as hydrargyrism. Then it is heavy, it is a silver colored D block element and it is the only metallic element that is liquid at standard temperature and pressure. I'm sure you must have seen that in thermometers. Then mercury remains uh, in use in scientific researches and in dental amalgam for dental restoration. And it is also used in fluorescent lightning. Uh, like the fluorescent lamps and the uh, compact fluorescent lamps, they use mercury in it and also incandescent lamps also use mercury along with lead this is how it looks it is liquid and silver shiny okay so the toxic compounds that it forms first is the elemental mercury now this elemental mercury if swallowed then it is not poisonous because it is not uh, absorbed by the GI tract, gastrointestinal tract but if it is inhaled in form of vapors then it causes acute poisoning. Next comes inorganic mercury compound. In inorganic compound mercuric chloride is the most toxic form. It is also known as corrosive sublimate. Then another compound is mercurous chloride also called calomel it is amorphous white colored and tasteless then it with sulfite mercury forms mercuric sulfide also known as cinnabar or vermilion it is red color powder that is not much poisonous then comes organic mercury here uh, organic compounds that mercury forms are methyl mercury, dimethyl mercury, ethyl mercury, phenyl mercury. Out of these, dim, uh, oh, sorry, methyl mercury is the most toxic form of organic mercury. Then action, it interferes with the cellular respiration process by combining with sulfhydryl groups of mitochondrial enzyme. As I told you in arsenic, this mercury also works the same way. Uh, it attacks the pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme and hence it, uh, uh, it affects the respiration process. Also, the elemental mercury and the organic mercury basically they are toxic to the CNS central nervous system. In organic mercury vapors when they are inhaled then they are corrosive to the skin, eyes, GI tract. In metallic mercury vapors they act as pulmonary irritant also. Then acute poisoning, now elemental mercury inhalation, if the mercury vapors are inhaled then uh, what happens, rapidly they are absorbed by the lungs because they, they are vapors, they are going to reach the lungs, then from there they reach blood and then the brain. Now clinically there are three stages that we can see, initially the metal fume fever is seen, then severe multi-organ symptoms occur and the last phase CNS symptoms they persist even in the last stage. Now if inorganic mercury compounds are ingested then they produce intense precipitation of the intestinal mucosal proteins and mucosal necrosis occurs that leads to bloody diarrhea and shock. If we talk about organic mercury uh, acute exposure then basically the CNS is uh, affected and hence we get to see symptoms like visual and hearing loss or tremors, pa paralysis or neurobehavioral impairment or even death in some cases. Uh, then comes post-mortem findings of acute poisoning. These include the body looks emaciated. Emaciated means lean, weak, thin. Uh, okay. in, the, in the GI tract, the mucosa shows inflammation, corrosion and it has grayish appearance. 
Next comes liver. Liver has cloudy swelling or fatty change. This change was also seen in arsenic. Then fatty degeneration is seen in heart and hemorrhages are also seen in the heart. Then talking about kidney, acute tubular and glomerular degeneration occurs or glomerular uh, nephritis can also be seen. Now chronic exposure. Now these are some of the important questions that can be asked in the exam. First is intentional tremor also known as shaking palsy. So it first occurs in the hand and then it progresses to the lips and tongue and uh, finally it reaches to the arms and the legs these tremors then in the advanced stage the person is unable to even dress himself walk write properly these are now also called hatter's shake or glass blower's shake because they are common in people working in the mercury in uh, glass blowing or the hat making factories now the most severe form of tremor is no, uh, tremors is known as concussion mercury mercury uh, mercurialis okay so next comes mercurial lentis this is a, a, a peculiar eye change condition that is developed when the mercury vapors when a person is exposed to mercury vapors here what happens is there is brownish deposition of mercury through the cornea of the eye on the anterior lens capsule okay so next is pink disease or acrodynia it is seen mostly in children due to idiosyncratic hypersensitivity reaction to inorganic mercury okay here the symptoms include pinkish rashes on the palm sole or the extremities of children now minimata disease this is a very uh, known well known disease happened that spread, spread in japan in the minimata bay what happened there is a factory discharge in organic mercury in the water now the mercury was methylated by bacteria and it was subsequently ingested by fishes and then these fishes were eaten up by the local villagers that led to spread of this disease by chronic mercury poisoning here the symptoms include disturbances in hand coordination gait and speech chewing and swallowing disturbances visual problems tremors etc then mercurial erythism it is seen in the chronic phase of inorganic mercury uh, mercury poisoning basically series of symptoms uh, were described by kushmal uh, it was seen in the mirror factory okay next post mortem findings include basically the brain is affected here the gyra of both hemispheres hemispheres are usually atrophic and uh, sulci are widened now the treatment include gastric lavage with 250 ml of 5% sodium formaldehyde sulfoxalate then uh, the uh, bal di or also known as dimer caprol dmsa succimer I have told these things in my arsenic video also. They are good. They act as good chelating agents. Then we need to maintain electrolyte and water balance. And uh, if these things doesn't work, then uh, we need to treat them according to the symptoms that they are showing. Then medical legal aspects. Uh, if it is uh, homicide or suicide cases, they are very rare. because however sometimes uh, deliberate intravenous or subcutaneously if the mercury is ingested in a person then these kinds of cases have been reported then uh, accidental accidentally broken if they are broken thermometers then a person can be exposed to uh, mercury then ingestion of uh, antiseptic solutions containing mercury chloride children might swallow sulfo uh, sulfocyanide of mercury tablets or the elemental mercury because of its shiny gray appearance thank you so much for watching this video if you found this to be useful then please like this comment if you have any problem and subscribe to my channel thank you yeah.